Welcome back to Constructive Uncoupling. This is Judy Weigel, your amicable divorce expert. Why? Because those are the only types of divorces I do. My company is Divorce Resource Incorporated in Los Angeles. I'm a mediator and a legal document assistant. I file for amicable divorces. An amicable divorce is really tough. As easy as it may sound with the two qualifications being, you have to be able to talk to one another in order to make settlement agreement decisions, and neither spouse can feel that the other spouse is hiding significant assets. This constitutes an amicable divorce, but I have a list of questions for you to ask yourself and for you to consider so that you know whether you really can have an amicable divorce. Number one, what is an amicable divorce? Well, other than being able to talk to one another so that you can make decisions for settlement and neither spouse will uh, think the other is hiding significant assets, you have to want to have an amicable divorce. You really have to want it. You can't have one spouse wanting it and the other spouse not. You both have to be participatory. That happens after a lot of work is done and maybe some time passes from the point where you decided to have a divorce to the time you file for a divorce. Number two, what is mediation? Well, I get a lot of calls. People say they want to be divorced by a mediator. Mediators can't get you divorced unless they have the additional license of being a legal document assistant or an attorney. But a mediation essentially is a conversation and a negotiation to establish a settlement for the divorce. Three, Is it possible to get to a place of having an amicable divorce if we really can't communicate now? Yes, it is possible with forgiveness and time, or at least the elimination of blame and time. Patience is the virtue that we all have to focus on when we're going through divorce. Number four. What if I can't let go of the reason for the divorce? Well, understand that we all do the best we can at any time. And sometimes our best isn't very good. So don't blame your spouse. You just have to, at least for the divorce, let it go. Make your decisions, move on. And then maybe therapy afterwards will be extremely helpful to compartmentalize and maybe to see if you had any part in the divorce. Generally, it takes two, not always, but you may have had a part in the divorce that if you reconcile with that, you can at least move forward. Number five, if we do qualify for an amicable divorce... Where do we start? You have three choices in how to file for any divorce. The court self-help center or online self-help, legal document assistants like myself, and attorneys. Number six, let's focus on what you do as a legal document assistant. Explain the service and the process you offer. That I get that a lot. Well, a legal document assistant is a paralegal on steroids. You have to be a paralegal first, and then you have to get a bond for at least $25,000 and a separate license as a legal document assistant. And all you can do is file. You can't help people with their settlement terms. Only mediators can and attorneys You are limited in terms of the extra assistance you can give people, but you are perfect for people who don't need to mediate or have done all the hard work and just simply want somebody to file so that they don't have to go through the extraordinary headache of doing it themselves. Number seven, how and when 
is mediation introduced into the divorce filing process. Okay, this is really good because it, it can be at two different times. It can be before you file. If it's before you file, though, you really have to know what assets the, um, the state that you're in, or at least California, that's where I'm in, you have to know what the state considers assets and what the state considers debts because that's what you're going to be dealing with in a settlement. You also... Oh, the, I'm sorry. The other place would be after you start the filing and you exchange what we call disclosure forms. Disclosure forms are your best friends, pain in the neck to fill out, but your best friends in terms of figuring out what you have to divide and the values that go along with that. But once disclosures are exchanged, which is after the petition is filed, served on the respondent, and after the response is filed, then you do your disclosure forms, and then you can mediate, because then everything is exchanged, everybody knows what's going on, and it's so much easier to engage in mediation, especially for the mediator to see everything laid out, whether it's separate property, community property, quasi-community property, part community, part separate so much easier after both people have exchanged disclosure forms. Number eight, can everyone mediate? No, not everyone can mediate. Mediation needs people who are able to communicate with each other civilly. It would be nice if it was more than civilly. If it was kind, that would be great. But civilly, you have to be able to talk to one another without being condescending, without raising your voice. You, you just have to be at that place so that you can have a negotiation because that's what it is. It's a, like a little business negotiation, except for the kids. The kids take a special skill and talent to deal with the visitation schedule and custody and support issues. Number nine, well, what if one person wants to have an amicable divorce without attorneys, but the other spouse wants to hire an attorney? What should the person who doesn't want to use an attorney do? Well, that person can actually use a legal document assistant or do it themselves, but then that person has to be comfortable negotiating with the attorney. And let me tell you, even though attorneys are supposed to call people back who are unrepresented, they don't. There are many different reasons why they don't. And I, I, I would rather an attorney were sitting with me in this podcast and we could talk about it, but not all attorneys will call the unrepresented party back. But you can do it yourself or use a legal document assistant. Now, if you use a legal document assistant, they can't represent you. They can't negotiate for you with the attorney. They can send your documents over. They can make sure that the attorney has everything the attorney needs to talk to you, but uh, a legal document assistant cannot represent you. Perhaps just for the negotiation piece of the divorce, you might want an attorney just to speak for you at that point and then go back to a legal document assistant to finish the filing. That would be a good idea. Number 10, how long does it take to get divorced? Different in every state. In California, it's a minimum of six months. Sometimes it's a year. Sometimes it's much longer than a year, but the length of time it takes to get divorced really depends on the parties themselves. How willing are you to move things forward? Are you purposely trying to hold up the process? Are you doing your paperwork correctly and on time? So it's the participation of the parties that determines the length of time. If you're using attorneys, and there are amicable attorneys, there really are, who don't want to file things that are unnecessary, and that can be kind and gentle. So that is a possibility. But the parties themselves and maybe the, the schedule of the attorneys will dictate the time it takes to get divorced. 
What about children and divorce? Tips for parents about to start the divorce filing and how to discuss this with their children. Oh, this has got to be the hardest conversation in the world. I don't envy anybody telling their children that they're going to get divorced, but this is the most important thing. Be united. Be kind to each other while you're talking to your children. Make sure you tell your children it's not their fault and there's no blame. They had absolutely nothing to do with it. And tell your children that you will always be a family. Your parents may not always be married, but you will always be a family. You'll just have two homes and more things. And just try and show the advantages. I know. (laughs) What advantages? Try and show the advantages. Well, the advantage would be, honestly, there's no more arguing in the house. Even when I talked to my, my nephew who was three years old when my sister got divorced, he remembered the arguing, and he even said it was wonderful when there were two homes because the arguing stopped. And I, I think kids know, for the most part, what's going on. They more than likely don't want you to get divorced. They want you to stop arguing, but... Make sure your kids know you're still going to be a family. Number 12, how do you mediate when people in an amicable divorce have very different views on a co-parenting plan? Well, two things. You show them different parenting plans. If they're, if the children are really young You just simply explain whatever parenting plan you come up with now, it's going to change. As children grow older, they dictate who they want to be with, and their schedules dictate how their parents with their working schedules can underscore the children's schedules. So you have to get ready for a lot of change. But if it's really, really, really tough because maybe one parent has a personality disorder or maybe both, maybe they're just not thinking clearly, maybe they're unrealistic, I send them to a person named Dr. Kathy Memel. She has her office in Beverly Hills. She's the go-to person for highly contentious parents or parents that may be stuck because they have to unstuck their views on family because of what they learned from their own family. She's marvelous. I can't say enough about her. Number 13, what are the greatest challenges people experience in a divorce, even an amicable one? That's easy. Keeping their emotional focus moving forward. That's really hard because anything can trigger the emotions of a divorce. And it keeps coming up. It's an emotional roller coaster. It's an emotional juggling match. Using little metaphors from my days with the circus. But it's true. People go through divorce at different emotional paces. And that in and of itself makes them hard to reach. Makes them not want to do their paperwork quickly. And... People need time to make decisions, so the emotions of a divorce are the biggest challenge. Number 14, what should someone do if their soon-to-be ex-spouse starts acting strangely, different than their standard behavior? Have them, re- have them read a book called The Good Karma Divorce by Judge Michelle Lowrentz, L-O-W-R-E-N-C-E. She used to be a family law judge in... Illinois, and she wrote a book called The Good Karma Divorce. It is the best book I've read to understand why spouses start taking on different behavior in a divorce. It's mostly as a self-protection mechanism. We all go in fear mode, therefore we all go in protection mode. And to understand that allows you to be patient. And again, that's what we need is patience. But that book is exceptional. Number 15, 
How should people keep themselves in a positive state of mind while going through divorce? Do positive things. Literally do positive things. Go dancing. Listen to music. Take exercise classes. So exercise is phenomenal. Not only does it make you focus and take your focus away from divorce, but it makes you feel good and it makes you look good. And there's nothing like a good divorce to get you trim again and looking your best. Because don't we tend to let that go when we get married? We all are a little guilty of that. But do things that are fun. Only be around fun people, people who do not want to cause arguments and make you rethink how you want to do the divorce. Really be careful of that. Number 16, whether amicable or litigious, what is the single most important aspect of a divorce? Communication. Communication, communication. You just have to learn different communication skills. And we aren't taught how to communicate in adverse situations. We just aren't. But one of the best ways to communicate in adverse situations is to stop blaming, stop being mean, stop being condescending, stop referencing in a passive-aggressive way the bad behavior, in your opinion, of your soon-to-be ex-spouse. Well, here's the other thing, how to handle a lack of communication or participation in one's spouse. That's really tough. But here's the deal. In divorce, at least divorce filing in California, there are time requirements for when things have to get done. So that time requirement in and of itself will force spouses to participate, or you end up going to trial. I mean, there's no no other way to do it. But be gentle, be patient. Maybe even say to the spouse who is having a hard time communicating, please take your time. When you're ready, I'm ready. Just doing that, just reaching out and saying that you want your spouse to take time that may unlock the, um, you know, the wall. That may, that may uh, allow the wall to be put down so that communication can start. Or you just start being different with your communication, kind and gentle. And that could help too. Number 17. Are there any books you would recommend to have an amicable divorce? Well, I just told you about the good karma divorce. But there's a gentleman that has written a gazillion books, and they're all unbelievably fabulous. Go on Amazon. um, Look up Bill Eddy, E-D-D-Y, Bill Eddy. This man has written the best books on how to understand the emotions of a divorce, how to understand your spouse who may have personality disorders, how to handle that. Bill Eddy is the best author known to mankind. So The Good Karma Divorce by Judge Michelle Lawrence and Anything by Bill Eddy. Number 18, do attorneys and therapists have a place in an amicable divorce? Well, you betcha. I think everybody should use a therapist while going through divorce because your emotions are all over the place. You need somebody to center you and to really help you look at the root of your behavior in the marriage and how that can affect the divorce and your spouse's behavior in the marriage and where that root came from. When you can start understanding each other, that is one of the best things you can do to move everything forward and start being amicable. And attorneys, I don't like demonizing attorneys at all. Attorneys are super important in divorce. They can give you your legal rights. A mediator shouldn't, and a legal document assistant definitely shouldn't. But you should really go to an attorney, first of all, to get your legal rights and get the the lay of the land on how divorce works in your state. But also, you'll get to see whether you like this type of relationship. 
you know, whether you want an attorney-client relationship to do the whole divorce. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I think everybody should have a go-to attorney on the side that you can just call and just say, give me the law so that you can go into a mediation or into a discussion with your spouse with informed consent to make whatever decisions you like, even if they're not straight law in your state. And lastly, number 19, how should people prepare for an amicable divorce? By stop hating your spouse, (laughs) by stop blaming your spouse, by putting yourself in a positive frame of mind, by using a lot of self-reflection to see what your participation was in the marriage. Maybe you chose the wrong partner, just starting with that. You know, that's responsibility, choosing the wrong partner, then nothing can really be right. Or just realizing, again, that everybody does the best they can in life, and sometimes our best just isn't good enough. But to prepare for an amicable divorce, just say, I really want to have an amicable divorce. I want to be able to talk this out. I want us to be able to get to a place where we don't blame each other. It's It might sound easy, but it's really the hardest thing ever. But when you can do that, you can use this skill that you've developed in all other relationships, whether they're personal or business or social. This will really help you throughout life. Thank you very much once again for joining me, Judy Weigel with Constructive Uncoupling. In, uh, my company is Divorce Resource Incorporated in Los Angeles. Please feel free to email me any questions or comments or maybe topics you would like to hear on the podcast. My email address is Judy, J-U-D-Y, at DivorceResourceInc.com. That's Judy, J-U-D-Y, at Divorce Resource. Inc.com. Talk to you soon.